Hello, I'm Stan Smith. Welcome to Is Not Is To, our studio. Let me real quickly catch you up. My plan was to show everything from start to finish, but somebody deleted some files. Now, I don't think we need to name names or anything like that. And besides, I don't think I'll ever make that mistake again. So let me catch you up and we'll get started pouring some resin. Picture one is the individual pieces that I cut from the half inch MDF wood and I rounded off the outside edges with my router. Picture two is my makeshift mold made from the wood that was left over after cutting out the parts. And I also used some aluminum foil and some foil tape and some caulking. In picture three I put foil tape on all the parts and have screwed them down from the back side. And all this was to keep resin from getting underneath and the whole thing just floating away. Now I realize I'm not making, uh, I'm not explaining this very good. But you got to understand, I barely uh, understand this myself. Um, the whole project here is pretty much an experiment. So I say let's go for it. Let me start by saying I will put a full description of the products I use in the description below. Now we have a lot of ground to cover so let's get started. I like using these mix and measure cups. Makes it real easy to mix equal amounts of resin and hardener. And I also like to set a timer to make sure I mix it long enough. I recommend reading and following the manufacturer's safety and use information. This project is also the first time I have used mica pigment for my color. I used five colors, and I'll put them in the description as well, and where I got them, and how much. Because I did not know how much I would need, I ordered three and a half ounces of each color, but I only used a half an ounce or so in each of the 10 ounce cups of resin. Expensive lesson, but now I know how much mica to order. And I plan on using mica again. It's beautiful. The first color I pour in is the brown that I added some gold to to give it more of a bronze color. Second color is the yellow and I'm adding the colors in a set pattern. Third the gold, then red, and last the coral color. And here's where all the prep work will pay off. Because it takes resin so long to dry, it has time to leak out and not just ruin the look of the sculpture, but it would have stuck these pieces of wood together so good it would have been humanly impossible to separate them. And my reasoning behind the small individual compartments is to keep the resin from just flowing all over and doing its own thing which can be beautiful, but been there and done that. So because it stays put, you can manipulate it. I'm using a toothpick making a simple pattern. Okay, now let's see if I can get it out of the form. It actually comes out pretty easily, mainly removing a bunch of screws. At this point, I was feeling pretty good, even though I knew I was going to have several more opportunities to lose control of it. At this point, the only thing holding it together is where the resin comes together at the points. 
So I use my cutoff tool and make little cuts right on the very tips. And then they actually come apart quite easily. And the foil tape comes off easily as well. By the way, this foil tape that I keep refer referring to is the kind of tape that AC people use on ductwork up in your attic. It's the real duct tape. Now that I have it all apart, I can clean up the edges so that I can glue it all back together. And by the way, I would love for somebody to leave me a comment, but please don't ask me how many hours I have in this. But I can safely say it was too many. Gluing up was pretty simple. I think this MDF wood glues up pretty good. And again, put down some foil. Didn't want to glue it to my work table. That would be embarrassing. Again, I've never done this before, which means I'm making stuff up as I go. So at this point, I have to decide. Just sand it and clear coat it, or fill in the cracks first. I decided to fill in the cracks. I was somewhat confident I would be able to sand it down and it would be okay. And filling in the cracks did get messy, but I did not give up. Here is my failed attempt at keeping at taping the corners to contain the resin. It did not work. It took several attempts to get it all filled up. I had to be very aggressive at first. I started with 80 grit on my belt sander. And then, as soon as I got it smooth enough, I rounded off the outside edges with my router. Then continued sanding, next with 120 grit, then 240 grit. I've done one other project where I sanded and then poured clear resin over it. The resin will hide small scratches. So you don't have to sand it till it's perfect. We are in the home stretch now. I'm mixing the resin off screen. I'm not adding any color. I just want a nice thick coat of clear resin. I have taped the outside edge to hold the resin in place till I can get the whole thing covered. Then I will quickly pull the tape and let it level out and cover all the edges. I think this gives it a really good look. I'd like to thank you for watching, and please consider subscribing to my channel. I have a lot more ideas of wall sculptures. I'm already working on the next one.